Sonuna kadar açık bir de bende yani sarı. <gülüyor> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Istanbul, the city where East meets West. It's the final, the second leg between Bacha Zahir College and Una Hotels Reggio Emilia in the FIBA Europe Cup. Well, the Ulker Sports and Events Hall is packed tonight, and uh, we are expecting a very, very loud and exciting game. Pachas here College uh, winning the first leg at Reggio Emilia last week by three points. Of course, they led by as many as 19, and both these teams coming into this contest uh, confident, full of hope uh, that they will once uh, by the end of the game be lifting uh, the European, the FIBA Europe Cup trophy. So Reggio Emilia, of course, uh, have been around the block uh, a lot longer, actually won the FIBA Euro Challenge back in 2014 and Andrea Cincerini, uh, really their, probably their most important player, their star player, he was the MVP of that big win. Uh, back in 2014, he ended up uh, joining for several seasons at Milano, but he's now back with Reggio Emilia and is as important as ever. Uh, going up uh, against a very good Bacchus here College team that has really been on been on the scene for four years in the Super League and uh, uh, relative newcomers in European competition. So, a uh, big moment for both of these clubs. And we're looking at them as they go through their final warm-ups. It, it really was just an unbelievable first leg. You just felt like Bacchus here at college uh, were going to just blow blow out their opponents uh, about halfway through uh, the fourth quarter. And then something incredible happened. Uh, Reggio Emilia, who had not lost at home all season, uh, started making some shots, started making plays on defense. Uh, and uh, Bacchus here at college perhaps uh, not making... Uh, not remaining true to some of their defensive principles. And the next thing you know, they stormed back and uh, Bacchus and her college in the end were lucky. Well, not lucky, but were fortunate perhaps to get away uh, with a three-point win. But uh, really respectful comments in the press conferences uh, from both both teams, both players. Jamar, Jamar Smith, one of the stars of Bacchus and her college, saying, hey, listen, it's a game of runs. Uh, the atmosphere here has been great in Italy, but it is going to be twice as loud, twice as good in Istanbul. And uh, that's good news uh, for everybody, including you and me, because we want to see a lot of energy uh, tonight. It's only going to add, add to the atmosphere, add to the vibe of, of this game. The European trophy is at stake, so it's no surprise. Uh, it is going to be incredible. Cincerini, well, he was really really good and uh, Tilio Caja the coach uh, you know obviously has said a lot of uh, really good things about Cincerini over uh, the years and since he's been here and we're gonna look at some of the light shows here uh, before the botches here college team 
uh, is coming out onto the court. So that first defeat really at Reggio Emilia last week uh, just kind of goes to show you how good this Bacha Zahir College team is uh, to be able to go on the road, open up a 19 point lead. And, and even though they only won by three, uh, they still did something that no other team had done. And that was get a win uh, in that uh, great facility. In fact, they weren't playing at Reggio Emilia, they were playing in Bologna. Arena is uh, being renovated, uh, but here at the Oker, Oker Sports Arena, Sports and Event Hall, it is uh, just uh, loud as expected, and, and there's Jamar Smith running out on the court, and you really have to appreciate how big basketball is in Turkey. Uh, it is it is an amazing sport, really, for the last, for more than two decades, in fact. Uh, so many great teams, the national team, uh, the, the, the clubs, uh, it's a great league and you really feel it every time you come to this uh, this great city and you see the, the terrific uh, job with development that they've done with their players, of course uh, players that reach the highest level in Europe and also go and play in the NBA and play in the college yeah, system, wherever we just have so many. FIBA Europe Cup'ta Bahçeşehir Koleji revanş maçında İtalyan Reggio Emilia'yı ağırlıyor. Ülker Spor ve Etkinlik Salonu'nda çok güzel bir atmosfer var. Türk basketbol tarihinde yine so önemli bir akşam. Castillo, FIBA Europe Cup. Oscars Lucic Finalinde getting the call Koleji. tonight. İlk maçı 3 sayıyla kazanmıştı well Bologna'da. Ve revanşta Yine maçı kazanıp seyircisi önünde kupayı kaldırmak istiyor. Tufan Ersöz'le birlikteyiz. Bu tarihi gecede Tufan hoş geldin diyelim. Hepimize iyi yayınlar güzel bir akşam olsun diyelim. Maç önce sosyal medyada paylaşmıştın. Türk basketbolun 7. Avrupa Kupası kapıda. Neler söyleyeceksin maç öncesinde? So the starting fives we're going to get a look at for Reggio Emilia tonight is Mikhail Hopkins, uh, Archer Stroutens, uh, Cincirini, of course, and uh, we'll go over those again as well. And we'll also get a look at the starting five for Baches here College, Jones, Hall, Smith, Oz, Savas, and Ber Berkai Chandon. So Jamar Smith, you see what he's uh, done this season, and he's been electric. And the way he's played in the first half at Reggio Emilia, he was like a house on fire, but then didn't score in the second half. Uh, so Reggio Emilia uh, were able to get to grips with him. Uh, and Cincirini, of course, his season averages, and uh, he just does so much. And the fact that he was able to ultimately come out and pour in the 20 points uh, to lead his team back, uh, it was key that Stroutens, in fact, uh, played very well down the stretch. And Atilio Caja, the Kaya, excuse me, the coach of Reggio Emilia. Sam Decker coming off the bench. 
Also Solomon. Botches Air College lost just once all season to Saratov 75-70. Erhan Ernak has just been uh, fantastic and really seems to be a great fit for this uh, for this team that has a lot of fans from college. I mean, it's a real college atmosphere as you can look and see here in the crowd. All the students have come out tonight to support the team. A lot of big wigs. Kamil Novak as well is here. The and tour guide Demirel, who's Turkish. Phoebe, your president, former uh, player himself. Both of those guys, in fact, uh, former players. And here's Jamar Smith coming out uh, with a confident gait. And also Jamal Jones. It's a, a very tough, very good team. Uh, Botches of Hair College has uh, put together this season. Uh, they're, they're definitely uh, going for a spot in the Turkish uh, playoffs as well. But right now, uh, they want to get really uh, potentially uh, the biggest moment in club history. They want to win the FIBA Europe Cup, just like Reggio Emilia. Well, hello, everybody, and good evening. We are underway here in Istanbul. Bacha Zahir College taking on Reggio Emilia, and Bacha Zahir College winning the opening tip. Uh, they've got Jandon, Hall, Jones, Osavas, and Smith on the court, and they're starting five. Here's Smith launching it from three-point range, and ball batted out of bounds. And it uh, looked like it was off Savas, but it must have gone off of... One of the players, no, it did go off Savash, so it, it will be Reggio Emilia basketball. And it's going to be Cinturini who's going to try to inbound it in front of his own bench. He's joined by Hopkins, Justin Blake Johnson, Tyler Lawson, and Arthur Stroutens. And here's Stroutens, who didn't get it going until the second half the other night. In fact, the fourth quarter, and here he is coming right out and stroking it from deep. So a good sign for them. And look at that. We are all knotted on aggregate and here is the steal and the drive and Tyler Lawson is fouled so great start here uh, for the visitors coming out with that look of determination and Larson doing exactly what you need to do uh, get the contact and now throwing it down down low is Hopkins so if they had a case of the nerves that kind of slowed them down in the opening game, Reggio Emilia is the team that has come out tonight and landed a couple of early shots. And they have absolutely, uh, well, they've taken the lead overall on aggregate. Jones from downtown. And we're knotted once again. In fact, now it's uh, Botches of Here College up by one point on aggregate. Cinturini outside to Hopkins. And a foul has been called. But Cinturini was very confident in the post-game press conference the other night. Stated very clearly that they believed they could come on the road in hostile territory and get the win and the way they have started tonight uh, you feel like they've got a great chance of doing just that now that foul was on langston hall and now reggio emilia have turned it over Kaya was so thrilled with how his team competed in the fourth quarter of the opening leg and wasn't surprised that's how they've done this season in the Italian Cup and the Italian League and also in the Europe Cup and now putting it up from three-point range and getting fouled by Stroutens 
So Stratton's convinced to foul and puts Jones on the line for three free throws. That is just a big no-no uh, for the Latvian. It's hard enough to make a, a three-point shot, and you definitely don't want to give away three free throws. And certainly not to Jones. Fans looking on with hope, expectation. Jones averaged seven and a half points this season. And you get the feeling like he could easily uh, put up some big numbers. He had 12 in the three-point win at Reggio Emilia. He had 15 against uh, Leiden earlier this season. Also 13 against Bakken Bears. 11 against Saratov. 16 uh, against London. So he makes all three free throws and botches it here at college now up six to five on the night and leading by four points on aggregate. Cinturini over to Stroutens to get it over in time. Stroutens for three. Good. Well, he has got a confident looking stroke tonight. He is not going to be messing around like he did in the opening game. Not getting on the board until late. It was striking how important he was to that team in every sense of the word. The mentality, especially Osavash. Little pump fake and earns a trip to the line. He got Hopkins off his feet with the pump fake and the Turkey national team veteran will go to the line. Now the pump fake, that is all Osavash right there. That's his bread and butter. This was him passing it outside as well to Jones. So Sabas, who, who played less than five minutes in the first game after starting, has come out and started well tonight. He's got that assist. And now he has the two free throws. Larson brings it up, guarded by, by Smith. Now he gets in the paint, keeps the ball low, and gets it over to his teammate, but Hopkins misses. Langston Hall gets into the into the lane, passes out, and is fouled. Sam Decker checks into the game, makes his first appearance. Oh, no, excuse me. No, he does not. Justin Blake Johnson's in the game. As well as the Baldi Rossi, who's checked in. That's who it was. Excuse me. And now the foul. Well, Justin Johnson really kept that scoreboard ticking over in the first half of game one. And... Here he is fouling Sabash. So they're having some uh, success getting it inside to the uh, to the veteran center, Oz Sabash, who now has three points. Lucius, also Latvian referee, talking to Stroutens. And Sabash this time misses, and it was uh, Stroutens that went up and... Uh, but a good job of bringing that basketball down with a little bit of authority. Cincerini passes back to Justin Blake Johnson who misses and these two teams kind of feeling each other out right now. Savash again going to work. On Johnson. Goes old school. Well, he has definitely been an X Factor tonight compared to the first game. He's already got five points.
And Morrison's pass deflected, so they will maintain possession. Jandon there, you have to keep an eye on him as well. 32, really good shooter, but uh, maybe a player that Reggio Emilia can take advantage of defensively when he's on defense. Stroutens again, and this time misses everything. Smith gets it back, drives in into the corner. Good from Jack, from Jones. Well, Jamal Jones already with nine points. And Kaya has seen enough. He calls a timeout. 5.39 remaining in the first quarter. And Jones is lighting it up. Well, a little bit of a nervous start as for Bacha Zahir College is uh, Reggio Emilia scored the game's first five points. But since that, it's been Bacha Zahir College outscoring the visitors 14 to 3. And they've been playing good team basketball. That started with Oz Sabash's bounce pass to Smith and then spotted Jones open in the corner. Joe Emilia now looking for a little bit of a spark. Trailing by six points. And that's nine points on aggregate. Hopkins over to Cinturini. And you love seeing that if you're a Reggio Emilia fan coming right out of the timeout and answering with a three. Pass to Savas, who's been a real problem. Passes it back outside the Jans, and he gets it over to Smith. And Smith strokes another three. Cinturini. And a foul before the shot. So he was held by Langston Hall. And Hall is going to take a breather. Going to come out of the game. And Ozmizrak, Kartal Ozmizrak comes in. He played very well in the first game. Stroutens over the corner and the ball batted away. He got it to Tyler Lawson. And a foul has been called. Cinturini dribbles right. Bounce pass into Hopkins. And Cinturini gets it back. Passes outside. And Larson misses. Here comes quickly Smith. He doesn't mess around, does he? Look at that. Another three for Smith. 
He's got the smile. He's got the shot. And Bacha Sahir College have a nine-point lead. Their biggest of the game. Cinturini. Over to Hopkins. Right at the elbow. And it's not going well right now uh, for the visitors. Sam Decker in the game and with the rebound. Smith again feeling it. Puts it up his third three-pointer of the game. And despite the confident start from uh, Reggio Emilia, Smith and Jones have come out and just tormented him. Hopkins. Larson. Hopkins kept it alive and gets the rebound. Great effort by him. They need everything they can get right now. Cinturini kind of loses it and is able to get it back. And somehow Reggio Emilia, well, they turn it over. Now they're going to get a break with uh, Jamar Smith. And it's all going horribly wrong for Reggio Emilia. And it's all about Smith right now, who you can see has 11 points. 14 point advantage. That may be a good fourth quarter team, uh, but this might be a mountain that's going to be too big to climb. For Reggio Emilia, if they don't put the brakes on this incredible run. So Sabash gets the high five. Smith gets the high fives as well, and the hugs. It's not over, but they have landed some serious blows here early on. So they go out of the game. It's uh, Mohamed Baigul, Decker, Ozmizrak, Solomon, Richard Solomon, and Erkan Yilmaz in the game now. Also, Stephen Mark Thompson's checked into the game and commits a foul immediately. So he puts Baigul on the line. Fortunately for Reggio Emilia, Weigel misses the first attempt. There's a Wojciech Liska. And Weigel makes one of two. Fifteen point lead now, 18 on aggregate. And there is no time to spare. Reggio Emilia already with a mountain to climb here in Istanbul. Cinturini into the corner and Stephen Mark Thompson misses everything. Thunder fans have traveled from Reggio Emilia uh, to watch this game and they are not happy. There's a Cinturini, passes up and Stroughton misses and somehow they do not come away with points. Unbelievable. And great work and hustle down the floor from Bunches of Here College. And the tip was good from Yomas. So that was a, a four point swing. And Cinturini now with the double dribble Kai has already burned one timeout. And the way this is going right now, they're going to need a minor miracle to get back into it. 17 point advantage. Two three zone being employed now by Reggio Emilia. Now the three point shot. Oh, Mizrak, or Beigel, excuse me. Well, that pass went off the backboard, and it triggers another break. Beigel. 
Gomez. Goes Mizrek. And his pass kicked by Justin Blake Johnson, so there'll be 14 seconds put on the shot clock. Timeout has been called. 49.4 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 28 to 11. Botches are here at college on top, and this man has been doing the business. Smith. Three threes in the first quarter. 11 points. In fact, now I think he's got 13. He's got 11 points to lead the scoring. Also, Jamal Jones has nine points. College, the first team from Turkey to make it to the final. So they would be the first to win the, the FIBA Europe Cup. If they can complete the mission tonight, and right now they've got a 20 point lead on aggregate. Beigel, six seconds on the shot clock. Now the alley you pass. Nope. Solomon comes down with it and then goes back up and jams it home. They are on the verge of delivering a first quarter knockout punch here against the Reggio Emilia. Stroutons for three. Baldi Rossi rebounds it back outside. So they'll try to hold it for the last shot. Cinciarini. And Osmizrak whistled for the foul. Holding Hopkins. So 4.5 seconds remaining. They've got four fouls now. So Hopkins and Solomon getting into it a little bit, and the referee has decided to, to speak to both. And whatever the referee told them. <laughs> Certainly hasn't calmed down things. Here is Thompson for three, and that just gives Reggio Emilia a little bit of hope. As they're going to head over now to the bench. Oh, an un a foul. I believe it's an unsportsmanlike foul that's been called on Solomon. Unbelievable. So watch this. Well, we couldn't see there really, but if it's an unsportsmanlike foul, then you've got two free throws and possession, but the referees want to review this. They want to review, first of all, to make sure there's the unsportsmanlike, and then I think they want to make sure they've got the right amount of time on the clock. Because as it is, if it's only 0.1 second, the only thing that Reggio Emilia could do after the free throws would be to throw it up to the rim. Quite a turn, really. I mean, it's it's still a 17-point advantage. You've got all the momentum. 
And there's just no need to give a whiff of hope at all to Reggio Emilia if you're Solomon and botches are here at college. And it's kind of what they've done. If Hopkins can sink these two free throws and then they're able to even get another basket uh, before the end of the quarter. So they, they've got 0.9 seconds. So they do have enough time for a quick catch and shoot three or two. You know, this could be a big turnaround. So Hopkins takes his time and makes the first. I'm not exactly sure what Solomon did, but he was definitely getting into it with Hopkins. Who makes both free throws, so it's already cost the home team two points. So it's back to a 17-point game on aggregate. And now, again, less than a second remaining, but... Still enough time for a catch and shoot. Hopkins turn around and this time Solomon gets the hand up in the face and the block. So it wasn't as bad as it might have been. But nevertheless, Bochester College dominate the first quarter. They lead it 30 to 16 over Una Hotel's Reggio Emilia at the end of one. Well, look at the three-point shooting. It has been good for both teams, really. Five threes for Bacchus here, four for Reggio Emilia. Uh, the Bacchus are here, more success down low and also uh, getting to the free throw line a lot. Seven of nine. Bacchus are here out rebounding Reggio Emilia, nine to six at the break. And Those five Reggio Emilia turnovers have been costly. So Bochester College scoring eight points off of the Reggio Emilia turnovers. first quarter was the play of Osavash. <clears throat> so he's going to come back out. Second quarter action underway in the second leg of the FIBA Europe Cup final. Stroutons misses. They battle for the rebound. And those Mizrak hands it off to Decker. So it's Decker, Jones, those Mizrak, Savash, and Smith in the game for Bachesahir College. And Decker misses from three point range. Centurini like would like to take some of the steam out of the game right now if he could and also hit a hit a shot you know, over to Thompson and Thompson just grazes the front of the rim the ball goes out of bounds off of Savash and it'll remain at this end with 14 seconds on the shot clock Centurini inbounds it to Thompson. Hopkins, quick pass down low, and Baldu Rossi gets a layup. Sam Decker didn't get there quite enough in time, and Reggio Emilia uh, finding their way back into the game. Trailing by 12 points in the second leg. 
Smith. And now he misses with a turnaround jumper from behind the arc. And now you have to wonder a little bit, well, about the shot selection. They hit the shots in the first quarter. So I guess it's hard to second guess. You live and you die by the jump shot. Hopkins. We saw him hit a three in the first leg. Here's Thompson. And Thompson still can't get it to drop. Cincerini would like to launch one himself. If he could get some space. Here he is. Oh, he gets the ball. Looked like the ball might have been blocked. Certainly affected by the by the defense. <clears throat> Jones and his attempt rattles out Cincirini over to Stroughton on the break and misses everything and then Thompson well I thought he made a mistake by going up quickly so the shot wouldn't be blocked but in the end a foul was called on Oz Mizrak look at this so just reaching in and Langston Hall is going to come back for Ozmizrak. And you would think right now for Reggio Emilia, if they could keep this crowd quiet like it is right now, that would certainly help their case. And Thompson misses the first. Certainly missing free throws is not what they need. So Thompson makes the second. Savage thought about the pass. Now he goes to the other side. The Langston Hall back to Smith. And Smith has it blocked from behind by, by Thompson, who's really good defensively. We saw that in the first leg. Now Cincirini. And Cincerini is fouled. Paul got a lot of ball, but then he hit Cincerini on the head. So Ozmizrak comes right back into the game for Hall, who now has uh, some foul trouble, three fouls. Cincerini. Thompson again with well, this one drop still cannot get it to go quickly the other end boxes here college Smith uh oh that's a mistake leaving him open but he is not on target that time Balderosi so Smith missing a couple of shots Balderosi good shooter good and look at that Reggio Emilia rising from the dead here Cutting the deficit back to eight points and forcing Bacha Sahir College to call a timeout. And those Reggio Emilia fans that have uh, traveled to this magical city of Istanbul on their feet and clapping hard. Well, it looks like Bryant Dewan Crawford getting ready to come into the game for Reggio Emilia. Right now you got Baldi Rossi, Cincerini, the two Italy internationals, along with Johnson, Stroutens, and uh, Thompson, who plays for Puerto Rico's national team. Baldi Rossi, that's one thing that he can really do is uh, if you leave him open, he will kill you from three point range. And that won't be a surprise because he hit them in the first game as well in the first leg
So Crawford in the lane, leaving Osmizrak open. Maybe not the best strategy. And he gets over in front of him again. Here's Decker with a little step back from downtown. And when those shots go in, they look great. But when they don't, you really do question the shot selection. Good hustle from Jones, but he steps out of bounds. Jadden comes back into the game. And Decker, who missed with the fadeaway three, <laughs> goes out of the game. Crawford gets the pass over to Johnson. And well, number 23 gets it done. Justin Blake Johnson. First two points of the game. And now the deficit is six. So they've done a great job in this second leg. They trailed by 19 points. And they've closed the gap back to six. Eerily reminiscent of the first leg. Only they've come, they've pulled it back earlier. Now Jones goes in for the dunk, but that is not. Oh, he stepped out of bounds. And botches here at college. Everything going wrong right now. And the fact that the crowd is uh, pretty quiet. Uh, all credit. To Reggio Emilia, there you see his left foot was out of bounds as he caught the basketball. Crawford hands it off to Cinciarini. Man, this is just remarkable, really. Reggio Emilia outscoring Baccia Zahir College 8 to nothing in this quarter. Cinciarini. Back to Stroutons. And he's fouled by Jones. Uh, Coach Ernak has to be a little concerned over there on the bench. His team still has a nine-point lead on aggregate, but right now, as he brings Black into the game, all the momentum is with Reggio Emilia. Cincerini back to Stroutons for three, and he banks it in, if you can believe it. Wow! The bank is open! Banking hours in Istanbul. Six-point game on aggregate. Six-point lead on aggregate for uh, Bacchus to hear college. How quickly things can change. Look at this again. He pops out. And was able to bank it in. I think he was also hoping to get a foul there. You feel like with botches here at college that they can just get a basket that'll put them back on track, but they're being outscored 11 to nothing in the second quarter. And those Mizrak misses. And don't forget the last four points of the first quarter was scored by Reggio Emilia. So it's a 15-0 run. Cincerini. Crawford and Johnson fouled from behind by Baigu. Well, this place is uh, as quiet as a cemetery right now. Cincerini gets it to Crawford. Johnson, he can hit the three, does not. Ball de Rosa, though, hustles to the basketball.
who comes down hard after the alley-oop jam. And botches it here college as Kaya, I think, is appealing for an unsportsmanlike, and hopefully his wrist is okay. Oh, well, Kaya, the way he's talking, looks like he thinks there was a foul that wasn't called. The steal was for Crawford. And now they've teed up. Kaya. Great play by Crawford defensively. Taking it away. And then he lobs it. I don't understand what Kaya's complaint is. Johnson caught Ozmizrak in the face with his right foot and then he crashed hard to the to the court and Kaya was certainly unhappy with something so they want to look at this on video replay look at this he does well to get the alley-oop and he, on the way down, his foot kicks Osmizrak in the face. Now, that would be a high degree of difficulty, really, in that situation to intentionally try to kick somebody in the face, I would think. Uh, but the referees are going to take a look and see. Certainly the player that came off worse for it, it looked like was Johnson, how, how he hit it hard. But let's see if they call an unsportsmanlike. So they count the basket. They have, they have called an unsportsmanlike on Johnson. Unbelievable. Well, I guess their feeling is that he did it on purpose. And all you can say is Reggio Emilia are their own worst enemies. They have the wind in their sails. Johnson clearly unhappy with that. I, I found it really hard that he would be able to do that. Uh, but the referees feel like an unsportsmanlike foul was merited. So two free throws and possession. Even so, Reggio Emilia will have to be uh, overjoyed with the fact that they've come back into the game and they've actually taken the lead. They're down by two points on aggregate, but the, the, they've uh, not given Bacha's here College a, a whiff of, of any points. And suddenly, uh, the unsportsmanlike well, the, first of all, they've called a, a technical foul on Kaya, so he makes the free throw from the technical, and now he will take the free throws for the unsportsmanlike, and misses the first. What a crazy sequence. And Ozmizrak makes two out of the three attempts. And Bacha Zahir College go back in front. And now they have possession. Wow. <laughs> Write that down. 3.56 remaining. The dunk from Johnson, but then the, the foot to the face of Ozmizrak. The technical foul and the unsportsmanlike. Here's those Mizrak from downtown. And they, they definitely have fallen in love with the, those long threes. They started like a house on fire from deep and 
now as a team they are five of twelve, so still a decent percentage, better than almost almost forty two percent. Uh, but they have taken some kind of uh, questionable threes. Crawford steps out of bounds. Man, you really feel like that was a huge opportunity missed by Reggio Emilia. They had all the momentum. Botches here at college were not scoring, and suddenly they've almost let them off the hook. You now Black in the game, and the foul called before the shot. So Hopkins with a little bit of a reach, and that, that is just, Hopkins is a very big man, and even he's struggling to contain Black as he goes to work on the low block. What hasn't changed is the, is the noise in the arena. It's been pretty quiet for the entire second quarter. Beigel drives in, lays it up and in. Mohamed Beigel. So Beigel sends both teams back over to the benches. And his team up by six points on aggregate. And now Crawford being taken to task, I think, uh, for his defense or lack thereof on that play. Crawford, I think maybe, I can only think that the coach was upset that he went for the block out of the perimeter and just gave away the layup. He'd rather have Beigel attempt that three. Well, the FIBA Europe Cup first was won by Fryport Skyliners over Open Job Metis Varese. That was a terrific one. I was there for that in Chalon, France. Fryport Skyliners winning that one 66-62. And since that point, we've had Nanterre from France, Monterrey, Venezia, Dinamo Sassari, 2019, and Ironi Ness Ziona from Israel in 2021, winning the titles. So three-point advantage in the second leg for Bacchus Zahir College, which means they're up six points overall in the final. And a foul has been called down low away from the ball, and it's been called. So called on Bacchus Zahir College. And Baldi Rossi. And nobody boxes out. Black. Uh-oh. Smith. Open. Count it. And suddenly the noise is back. Gene Chirini. Here's Crawford. Cincherini into the corner. Thompson for three, and this time he nails it. What a final this has been between these two wonderful clubs. Thompson now two of five from three-point range. 
And Black catches and is fouled, so he gets a couple of free throws. Fouled by Baldi Rossi. Black has uh, been very effective since coming into the game here in the second quarter. So Johnson, after his kung fu kick, comes back into the game. Strout also comes back. You can see Johnson right pleading his case that he didn't mean to do anything. been good at the free throw line tonight 10 of 13 well I probably jinxed them now 10 of 14 one and a half minutes remain here in this first half Thompson over to Stroutons Johnson scraps away for the rebound takes his time puts it up and never looked comfortable trying that putback So Stroud is called for the foul on Baigu, who is back at the free throw line. He was one of two just a few minutes ago. Well, we're starting to miss a few free throws now. Down to 66.67%, 10 of 15 on the night. And Baigu is one of three. And we'll make it two of four. <laughs> Cinciarini over to Thompson. Final minute of the first half. It's been quite a bizarre one, folks. Rochester here college going up by 19 points and the second quarter this has been the better team though Hopkins misses he looked over at the ref for a foul none called Baigu and bumped by Cinciarini so more free throws coming for Mohamed Baigu. Uh, yeah, I guess you can see why Chincherini didn't think that was a foul. But it was well played by Mohamed Baigu. Kind of got some contact and went down. 27 seconds remaining in this opening quarter. And botches here college at the line leading by eight points on aggregate. And Baigu makes the first. This crowd just not as lively as they were in the first the first quarter. And it's almost as if they feel like they know that this Reggio Emilia team can come back. So both free throws made by number five, Mohamed Baigu. And the lead now on aggregate is 10 points. And you would think Reggio Emilia would like to take this down as far as possible on the shot clock and try to have the last shot of the first half. Cinciarini, and he's fouled. So they probably will not get the last shot. So Yomas fouls Cinciarini. Uh, anytime you reach like that, you're gonna get a you're gonna get a foul call, especially if the offensive player goes down. 
Stroutens goes out. And Cinciarini misses the first. Stroutens, by the way, has three fouls. Reggio Emilia has not been to the free throw line a lot tonight, and Cinciarini has missed both. Johnson snuck in, got the rebound, but now they have called a foul. For pushing off on Johnson. And that is a, this is about as bad a way to finish for Reggio Emilia as you can imagine. Instead of making two free throws, and cutting the deficit, they have now given the ball back uh, to Bacchazahir College at the free throw line in Jandon. Now, the only good thing for Reggio Emilia is that they should get one last look, uh, but they've definitely kind of uh, lost the momentum since the Johnson dunk and unsportsmanlike foul. They're having a hard time getting the basketball in bounds. They do. Larson. Cinciarini. Johnson for three. Good. Well, how about that? Boy, what a bizarre game has been, folks. Johnson has been at the center of all things bizarre. Had just enough time to strike from downtown. Look at this. Great play by Cinciarini. And Johnson makes sure he's behind the arc. And despite Decker flying at him with the, the hands outstretched, he is able to make the three-pointer and cut the halftime deficit to 43-37. So it is a nine-point lead on, on aggregate for Bacchus here at college. And I think they just want to look and see, was his foot behind the arc? And yes, it was. Uh, so that is going to count. And also, actually, I think they want to see if he got it off in time. And it looked like just in the nick of time. Yes. So they will count that. So 43-37, Botches here College on top of Uno Hotel's Reggio Emilia. That is a nine-point lead on aggregate. Still all to play for in the second half. Yeah, they will count that. You can see. So that was a huge shot that's been counted, and the referees did a good job by going over and looking at the replay monitor. Is Botches in here at college on top? 43-37 over Reggio Emilia at halftime. So Botches are here. Six threes, eight for Reggio Emilia, including that last one. But the free throw line has been huge for the home team. 15 of 20 in the game compared to just three free throws made for Reggio Emilia. Reggio Emilia are doing a good job to, on, on, the, on the boards winning that battle. They turned that around the second quarter. Also four more assists for Reggio Emilia. Uh, perhaps not surprising with how Bacha Zahir College put up a lot of threes. So we're at halftime. We'll be right back before the start of the second half.
course, meant they went up by 22 on aggregate. Uh, but Reggio Emilia are not a team that goes quietly. They have got uh, terrific capacity to battle back. And uh, right now they are down by nine points on aggregate, six in the second leg. Here is... Uh, the first move down low and scoring was Black, who's been a real problem for for Reggio Emilia. And I think that probably is something that Coach Aaron Ike figured out in that first half because he has started the big fella here in the third quarter. Thompson pulls up, and the Puerto Rico International sees his attempt go off the rim. And Langston Hall drives in and scores and earns a trip to the line as well. Baldi Rossi called for the foul. Excuse me, it's on uh, Hopkins. Hall does not complete the opportunity. And uh, even so, it's a 13-point lead overall. 10 points in the second leg. Cincerini dribbles right, hands it off to Stroutens, who has three fouls. Now Cincerini. Cincerini, Baldi Rossi, Hopkins, Stroutens, and Thompson on the court for Reggio Emilia. Here's Hopkins, turns, short, and falls kindly to Baldi Rossi, but he misses, he does not, he misses everything. And the shot clock expired. So a worrying start here to the third quarter for Reggio Emilia. Jamar Smith dribbles, passes back to Jandon for three. And despite their ability to knock down some threes, you, you would have to say that for Reggio Emilia, they're going to be more than happy uh, for those attempts to go up from three-point range. Instead of giving away layups, Cincerini misses, however. And now the pass up ahead, and that's what I'm talking about. Jamal Jones gets ahead on the break. And it's been a bad start to the second half for Reggio Emilia. So Kaya has to call timeout, just like he did at the start of the game, early in the quarter. Black, Jandan, Hall, Jones, and Smith in the game right now for Baches of here College. Here in the Uker, Uker uh, Sports and Event Hall. They lead 121 106 on aggregate. These are the plays where you simply cannot give away transition buckets to a team like Baches of here college that's that's how they want to play basketball and you can see why they are going to be difficult to stop if this game opens up for them now Kaya was able to work his magic in the first half let's see if he can slow down this Baches of here college team in the third quarter. Oh, they pass it down low. Hopkins is fouled as he goes up by Black. Boy, that was a terrific pass along the baseline from Stroutens. Look at that. Hopkins coming over and now he is at the free throw line. He's been good at the line tonight. 
They haven't had many opportunities. Reggio Emilia, but Hopkins has been uh, perfect. He's three of three. They're four of seven as a team. Maybe the big surprise was Cincharini missing two free throws uh, right at the end of the first half. Although Reggio Emilia's Johnson was able to hit the corner three-pointer to get some of the momentum back for them. Smith to share it around. Hall. Jandon from the left. And Jandon silky smooth. He's got a nice, nice stroke. Thompson saved that ball from going out of bounds. He is driving hard. Oh, he gets it to drop. Well, it's a tough finish. Former Oregon State star. Made it to the Final Four, in fact, with Oregon State. NCAA Final Four. Now the dump. Here's Black. Goes to work on Hopkins. Oh, Black. Black has just been uh, pretty much unstoppable. He's got five points. Feels like he scored a lot more than that, but he's made a big impact on his game. Team Charini and able to get the basketball back. Here he is, gets in the lane, shares it. Hopkins, did he get off in time? Stroutons gets the offensive rebound, and boy, they were living dangerously. They were able to get two points on that trip down the floor. Great defense by Botches of here at College. Forcing them to use the entire shot clock. Now the dump, and this time they do stop him. Stroutons stops Black. And a chance to run, and look at that. John, Jandon almost coming up with a steal and going the other way. Ball goes out. Jandon uh, started this game. He had, he had seven points in the first meeting. Oz Mizrak comes into the game. Here's Cincherini. Strout was bumped by Jamal Jones. Hopkins, he steps into it a little long. He likes that three right at the top of the key. Oh boy, they come up with a steal and Johnson makes them pay. Good alert, quick hands from Johnson. And Reggio Emilia hanging around, down by eight points in the tie or excuse me, in the game, and 11 on aggregate. John Den again. Oh, boy, he is good, isn't he? You've got so many weapons in this Bacchus here college team. He doesn't have to put them up that much, but when he does, it seems like it always goes in. Now Thompson, Hopkins trying his luck again from downtown and gets it right back. Former Georgetown Hoya. Most Mizrak fouled by Cincharini. Well, not a great, not a great foul by Cincharini. He's in a little bit of foul trouble now. He's got three. He's got to play the rest of the game. Can't imagine him going out. And it could be that Kaya will have to sub him out at some point. 2-3 zone for Reggio Emilia. And the lob and Solomon couldn't quite get hold of it. A clean attempt. Johnson stopped on the break. Oh, now he turns on Jandon. And Solomon, upset with himself, probably feels like he should have gotten that alley-oop dunk. And Jandon then reaches around and commits the foul. 
Jones goes out. And Yomas comes back into the game. Here's Thompson. Stroutens on the wing and the ball thrown over Johnson. Not sure he was even aware that was coming in there. Kaya just looks down, hates to see the turnovers. Solomon took his time and a late whistle. The foul called on Hopkins. Well, that was the replay, and that is bad news. Hopkins goes over to the bench, having picked up his fourth foul. Not a player. Reggio Emilia won't on the bench. Baudi Rossi back in the game. And Solomon at the line. And Solomon seems to have lost his rhythm a little bit here in this third quarter. This is both free throws. So, it's not been a thing of beauty at the free throw line for Bacha Sahir College, shooting uh, 15 of 23, 65%. Now the bounce pass over to Stroughton, steps back for three, oh, goes in and out. Hit the front and then the back of the rim and stayed out. Now Smith. Still plenty of time, 13 and a half minutes for Reggio Emilia, but Bacchus are here at college. You feel like they've got another big run coming. Smith, his attempt not there, and Baudi Rossi called for the foul, trying to keep Solomon off the glass. Look at him battling away. Oh yeah, he was kind of hooking him right there. That's what it was. Four fouls on Reggio Emilia, 3.15 remaining, so any more, they are over the limit. Smith would like to get back in the flow offensively. Here he is, handing it off to Decker. A spectacular reverse dunk. Boy, did he show some hang time. Oh, Decker has made some spectacular plays in this FIBA Europe Cup final. He did it in the first leg, and now he's done it here tonight. Thompson, they swing it, and Baldi Rossi, or, yep, Baldi Rossi drills the three. And Reggio Emilia just trying to hang in there. Was Mizrak fouled by Cincerini, and that is number four. And boy, those are two horrible fouls for Cincerini in this third quarter. And he's got four fouls. That means arguably the most important player in this team is going to have to maybe not. Won't be able to gamble as much defensively, that's for sure. And you almost wonder if Bacchus here at college will go after him. Well, if I'm Kai, I sit him down. You've got... The problem is, I mean, you could bring Tyler Lawson back in the game. You could also bring Crawford back. He doesn't seem to be in favor, though, with uh, Kaya. Oh, 
Oh boy, tough pass. And Thompson did a great job of just getting his hands on it. With Cincerini flirting with the fifth foul. Oz Mizrak passes it back outside by Gould. Now in the corner, Yomas drives in and throws it down. And this botches to here college team has got definitely the momentum now. Up 14 points. Look at this. He was not going to pass up the opportunity to get up there and hang on the rim and slap the backboard. Troutons. Remember, he's got foul trouble as well. He's got three fouls. Here's Thompson. Fouled while attempting the three by Ozmizrak. Just a, a terrible foul by the Turkish guard. Yeah, you want to get the hand in the face, but you simply do not want to give... Reggio Emilia free throws when they're struggling to get anything going offensively. And he stopped the clock as well. But Thompson really probably becomes the most important player in the game now with all the foul trouble and his ability to both drive and score from deep. So the Puerto Rico International now with 10 points, make it 11, and if he can get this one to drop as well. He would help Reggio Emilia feel just that little bit better about themselves. But again, the problem, the foul trouble with Cincerini, he's being really careful. You can see he's, when he plays defense on his man, when he's got the ball, he's got his hands behind his back. Ooh. And even, even in a play like that, he's got to be careful. He doesn't pick up the foul, trying to knock the basketball away. Look at his hands right now as he guards Baigu. Baigu gets inside, passes it back outside. Yomas again, flushing in. This time he gets rejected by Johnson. Terrific defense from number 23, Johnson. Yomas thought he was going to throw it down, and Johnson said, not in my house. And this time, Baigu wraps up Cincerini. Who again with the four fouls, the two cheap ones out on the perimeter in this quarter. See Cincerini trying to appeal for calm. And boy, that was a tough old boy. Cincerini had to be careful. He didn't go for the reach there and commit the foul. And even so, botches it here. College race down the floor. Solomon. So free throw is coming for Solomon. He just missed a couple. He's been a little bit out of sorts offensively tonight, but he makes the first attempt this time. Good for Solomon. Thompson able to get it across midcourt. Reggio Emilia simply cannot turn the basketball over the way they just did on their previous possession. 
See these botches here. College team defensively really trying to get get after this uh, team right now. Here is Thompson. Oh, what a terrific play. Are you kidding me? Beautiful drive from Thompson. Baigu over to Ozmizrak. Tinchorini has to be careful. Here's Solomon for three. And fortunately, Correggio Emilia Solomon misses. He had a good look. They're trying to hang in there. Reggio Emilia, they've got 10 minutes remaining. They trail 64 56 in the second leg. That's 136 to 125 on aggregate. So they are down by 11 points overall, 10 minutes remaining. Reggio Emilia cooling off a little bit, outscored 21 to 19 in the third quarter. Huge disparity at the free throw line. Even with all the misses by Bacha Sahir, they still made nearly 10 points more at the break, at, at the line. Reggio Emilia battling away on the board. This has been a fourth quarter team all season long, Reggio Emilia and Coach uh, Atilio Cayo will be hoping uh, tonight is the same. Black comes back in the game, he was a real problem. There was about six minutes left in the last game when Reggio Emilia found themselves down 65. No, excuse me, it was. They were down 17 with 620 remaining, and they were able to come back. Now, are we going to see the same thing tonight, or are we going to see Boxes of Here College kill this thing off? Thompson. Stroutin for three. Tried to make that shot with the defender flying in his face. Remember the foul trouble right now for Reggio Emilia. It is not good. Hopkins on the bench. And their best friend right now are missed jump shots from Bacha Sahir College, as well as uh, if they can foul them. Oh, Cinciarini almost... Uh, traveled now Stroutin so just missed from three now he puts it on the deck puts it up he's fouled and Yomas puts him on the line yeah, just kind of lunged into him as he went past him so Hopkins comes back in with the four fouls as now or never and it's not going to be easy against Black, who you know full well is going to go right at him. Probably the next trip down the floor. You really do. I mean, it, these, these free throws can be the best friend of Reggio Emilia because it stops the clock, allows them to rest. They're, they're not, they don't have a big rotation tonight. Back to a nine-point deficit on aggregate. Pass on Decker gets it to Black, who goes up and just throws it down. Hangs on the rim like it's his own little personal jungle gym. And Hopkins is not going to be able to contest that because of his foul trouble. Now Cincharini gets it back to Hopkins. 
Oh, he missed everything. And that allows Decker to get out on the break and dunk it. And the timeout has been called as Botches are here college start to lower the boom. Going up by 13 points on aggregate. Atelio Kaya and Reggio Emilia perhaps with one final roll. Club Botches are here at college uh, to be in this spot at this point of their existence. A chance to win a European trophy, the Phoebe Europe Cup, would just be an amazing, amazing accomplishment. And you have to wonder how much higher, how quickly this team can go. I mean, they have clearly got some good talent on display and Black has uh, been tough. Decker again has been quite an addition to this team. Eight and a half minutes remaining. Let's see what Kaya has drawn up over during the timeout. So as Droughtons comes up, Yomez goes for the steal and and Stroutens tries to get a foul call, but the referee says uh, Yomas played good defense to knock it away. Six seconds on the shot clock. And again, the foul trouble really limits Reggio Emilio. Because Cinturini can't gamble the way that he would like to. Uh, he gets it to Stroutens for three. Boy, what a terrific shot from the Latvian. It's put up or shut up time for both of these teams, but especially for Reggio Emilia. They have just got to come out and make some plays. Those Mizrak. Gets it to Black. Remember, Hopkins has four fouls. He passes it back outside. Those Mizrak for three. Oh boy, that's a killer. That's a dagger. That's an early in the fourth quarter dagger. Traveling is the call, the defense getting it back. You really feel right now like it's Botches to hear college's uh, game to win or lose up 13 points on aggregate. Reggio Emilia have got to get stops and they got to get buckets. And the kick called on Hopkins. So they'll put another 10 seconds on the shot clock, take it up to 14. Omar Onan there in the middle of the screen, the former Turkey national team point guard watching events and Smith now called for a foul. Also Maurizio Giardini at the game tonight, famous general manager. In fact, he will definitely be interested in this team. He used to have so much success really with uh, Treviso in Italy. He's been, a, he's been in Turkey for over a decade. Johnson off the front of the iron. The long rebound goes out. And Kaya applauding his players. Flat the foul on Black. A little bit of a push on Stroutens. Quick pass to Hopkins. Hopkins 
Puts it up in the paint. Johnson goes up and can't come down with the basketball. Osmer Zach, meanwhile, does. Wide open in the corner, Yilmaz. Where there's hope, there's life. That's the case for Reggio Emilia. Six and a half minutes remaining. Can they come up with an incredible comeback? Well, good defense. Keeping the ball away from Hopkins. Here's Yomas. All shares the basketball to Decker. And Kaya looks over at the table and asks for another timeout. Well, Decker just does. He just goes spectacular whenever he can. You can understand why he was a first-round pick in the NBA coming out of Wisconsin. Of course, that was several years ago. I mean, to be able to come back at a game like this, as you look at the replay of Decker's jam off the off the sharing of the basketball from Yilmaz, you know, the way that Reggio Emilia were able to come back in the first game was they were able to really gamble defensively, make some plays, and they just are not going to be able to gamble this in the same way tonight because they've got so much foul trouble. I mean, Cincharini and Hopkins are kind of handcuffed right now with four fouls, and Kaya, you have to believe at some point is going to have to take maybe both of them out and bring Larson back in and maybe even Crawford and, and try to make some, some gambles on defense. Langston Hall back in the game guarding Cincharini. And Cincharini's pass deflected. Cincherini looks for space, puts it up. Good. Uh, just the ultimate concentration. It has to be almost perfect basketball offensively for this Reggio Emilia team from here to the end. And the big question is, can they get stops? Black passes it back outside to Decker. Good. And the way Decker is playing, he's not going to let any comeback happen tonight. For Reggio Emilia. Quick pass to Johnson. Surrounded. Passes it back outside. Cincharini. And then Jones just takes it right away from Cincharini. Thompson picks up the foul. So Larson is going to come back, but he's going to come back in for Thompson. And as you look at Decker, he's pumped up. He realizes he's very close uh, to getting his hands on a European trophy for the first time in his career. Black. And Black was fouled by Bal de Rossi. So he's now gone as well. He didn't last long since coming back in. That really hurts not only because you need an extra body, but he's also a three-point shooter. So Bal de Rossi out of the game. Having scored eight points, he made both of his Attempts from three-point range. He had five rebounds. And Black, who just really has been a difference maker tonight, is at the free throw line. Eight points. It's incredible to think he's only got one rebound. It just seems like he's been so much more influential. He only makes one of two. And now we're getting into uh, the minor miracle stage of the game for Reggio Emilia. That's what they're going to need if they're going to 
if they're going to get a win or at least force overtime or make this a game at the end. Stroutens from the elbow. And Black rebounds the miss. Tried to get the pick and roll going, or the screen and roll. Coach Ernak decides to burn a timeout. 4.22 remaining. And things looking promising for Bachas to here college. Be their most, probably their most famous night as a basketball club. If they can win the FIBA Europe Cup. Fourteen points for Jamar Smith, eleven for Jamal Jones. Most of that damage was done in the first half. Also nine for Decker, eight for Tarek Black, seven apiece for Ozmerzak and Jandan. But you've also got Mohamed Baigu who has six points, and then four apiece for Richard Solomon and Erkan Yomas. Two points for Langston Hall, and it all adds up. Uh, to a 77 points for Bochester here at college. And when you figure also that maybe it should be even a bigger lead because they've missed nine free throws tonight, shooting 69%. 69% at the free throw line. Reggio Emilia, I, I really feel like you go back to that first half that second quarter when they were on a 15-0 run and Johnson went up and dunked it and then was called for an unsportsmanlike foul because as he, just as he came down, his right leg, right foot went up and hit Osmerzak in the face and then in Kaya's technical and just kind of changed the flow of the game. Stroutens now has four fouls. It's going from bad to worse. They've already lost Bao De Rossi, Cincharini, Stroutens, and now and Hopkins as well all have four fouls. And the drive in black, perhaps fittingly, goes in and scores. He's got 10 points. They're starting to rev up the party machine right now. They can feel it. Istanbul is title town tonight, it looks like, uh, for the home team. Cincharini steps back. Brings a little bit of rain with the three. Wow. That's a couple of threes for him in this fourth quarter. That just about gives Reggio Emilia a pulse. They're down by 16 points on aggregate. Decker catches, shoots. It's an air ball, but Black, who else, goes up for the rebound. And then Hopkins fouls him. And he is gone. Number five. Well, it's been a good season for Hopkins, but it's coming to an end here. And there's no doubt, you know, tonight his matchup with Black has been won by Black. And Hopkins goes out having scored nine points. He also had four rebounds. Came in averaging 11.4 points, 6.8 rebounds per game. Been a pretty solid contributor throughout this uh, season, this FIBA Europe Cup. Oh, okay, so now Cincerini has a point taken away, so it just adds insult to injury for Reggio Emilia. Is that Cincerini 
We thought it was a three, but in fact, it was a two. Well, it's unlikely. You never know. What are the? I wonder what the uh, percentage chance is for a comeback here for Reggio Emilia. It has to be slim and none, maybe, and slim just left town. But at the end of the day, you just got to play for the remainder of the contest and hope that maybe something happens that gives you a chance right at the end of the game. Black, though, continues to be a thorn in the side. He's got 12 points. Thompson goes left and hits another three. I'll tell you that the situation is so dire for Reggio Emilia, it seems to have really improved uh, their concentration from downtown because they've been stroking the three-pointers in this fourth quarter. Hall gets it over. Jamal Jones for three. And listen, and finally, once again, the crowd started to make some noise the way that it did in that first quarter before the comeback by Reggio Emilia. They can sense it. 18 points, the difference on aggregate. Thompson. I think on balance, he's played very well today. A lot of pressure on him to produce. He's got 19 points. Stroutman's not quite able to beat Decker to the basketball. Decker steps back, puts it up, and another three-pointer for Sam Decker. And Bosch's in here college playing like the way they were early in the contest. An offensive foul called on Johnson, battling away with Jamal Jones. Yeah, he just got locked up there. I mean, to be fair, who do you call that hook on? How do you know it's on him? Well, I guess maybe it, referee felt like it was initiated by Johnson. Black goes out. Here's the applause. He's been terrific tonight. And the students that have come tonight from Bachezahir College, you can only imagine how they're going to be celebrating uh, for the rest of the evening. There may not be much sleeping tonight for these people. Hall back outside to Jones. Steps up. Team Torini with the four fouls. This is the Stroutons. Hands it off to Johnson. And Cincerini was fouled as he got down low. We're going to help him up, the veteran. We can only respect the way that he approaches his business. That foul called on Ozdemir. Heidi Ozdemir has come into the game. Well, you know what they say, I mean, you, when you lose a final, it's painful, but to lose a final, you have to be able to get to the final, and that kind of uh, tells you all you need to know about Reggio Emilia. They have had a great season to make it this far, and it's so disappointing for them uh, to have it end the way that it is clearly going to end with a defeat, uh, but there's no doubt that Botches here College have been the better team. Well, Johnson. And really, you go back to that second quarter, the opportunity when they really had all of the momentum 
And you go back to the unsportsmanlike foul that was called on Johnson after his dunk and the technical that was fouled on Kaya. And I really believe that was a turning point in this game. Another three-pointer. And the long shot, no good. The rebound. And Cincerini can't get to drop. The ball is out of bounds with 22.6 seconds remaining. And you can see what it means to the players. You can see what it means to the fans. Any trophy that you can win. Stroutens goes out and uh, leaves a little calling card here late in the game. That'll probably be the last three points of the game. Amazing season in the Phoebe Europe Cup. And it has finally come to an end here. Botches in here college. They go unbeaten at home and they win it. 90 to 74 over Reggio Emilia, the second leg for a 162 143 victory on aggregate over the two legs. Terrific accomplishment, and Atelio Kaya is showing a lot of class by going over and congratulating uh, Botches in her college. There was no doubt about it tonight. After that second quarter, the way it kind of swung and the momentum was reclaimed by this Botches of Your College team right before halftime. And now look at them. And you can understand the weight of the achievement for them. It's a huge, huge moment uh, for Botches of Your College, for their fans. And you wonder what it portends for the future for this club as they continue to, uh, to rise quickly in uh, Turkish basketball and also in Europe. So you never get tired of seeing scenes like this. You know, the pain will be felt by Reggio Emilia right now, but it's all adulation and ecstasy for the team in white. All the hugs and they'll, they'll always be able to look back and say, we won a European trophy the FIBA Europe Cup back in 2022, winning in front of a packed house in Ulker, in Istanbul rather, the Ulker Sports and Event Hall over a Reggio Emilia team uh, that has uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of tradition themselves. They could have lost their confidence. They could have lost their numerous times, really, especially the way that first game went. Botches in her college, uh, the way that Reggio Emilia came back from a 19 point deficit to lose by just three points. And also the way that they trailed tonight or the way that they uh, lost the initiative in that second quarter. But uh, they were able to regroup and to the victors go the spoils. Richard Solomon, Tarek Black, Coach Aranak, Sam Decker really distinguished himself tonight with, uh, again, some, some terrific plays in the open floor, the open court, also his three-point shots. 90 to 74, Botches of Here College win it over Una Hotel's Reggio Emilia. That's a 162-143 win on aggregate. So a great night, Ender Arslan, one of the assistant coaches there, hugging Langston Hall. And what does this mean for Botches here at college uh, for the rest of this season? You can imagine uh, what their prospects, you know, get a little bit of momentum with this, with this win, help them uh, perhaps clinch a spot or go on to clinch a spot in the Turkish playoffs. And they could be a dangerous team in the Super League playoffs. Uh, for Reggio Emilia, again, nothing to hang your heads about. You, uh, you had a great season getting to the final, and you want to hopefully go back and continue to have a strong season in Italy and make the playoffs there.
Uh, it's a beautiful sight there. Pops with his daughters. And Savash, you know, it's the type of thing that you want to experience, certainly as a player, uh, to celebrate uh, with the kids on the court uh, after a title win. So they're getting the stage set to hand off the trophy, the, the FIBA Europe Cup trophy to Botches here at college. You know, it's a nervous moment for that trophy as well. It's going to be lifted high into the, into the sky tonight by these, uh, by these winning players. It's going to be passed around. Of course, Reggio Emilia will also be recognized tonight uh, for their great season. Here's a look back at uh, some of the highlights. And as you look at these highlights for Botches of here College, I'll just go over again some of the numbers. Sam Decker with 12 points, 14 for Jamal Jones, 17 for Jamar Smith, 12 for Tariq Black. And you had seven apiece for Berkai Jandan and Cartel Osmerzak, five for Oz Savash, who was really important uh, setting the tone in the first quarter. Richard Solomon and Erkan Yomas each with four points. Two points for Langston Hall. And for Reggio Emilia tonight, you had uh, 19 apiece for Artur Stroutens and St Stefan Mark Thompson Jr. Eight for Baldi Rossi, nine for Hopkins. Nine for Justin Blake Johnson, eight for Andrea Cincharini. Wasn't quite as impactful tonight, although to be fair, he also had nine assists. Uh, he did turn it over seven times and uh, he missed a couple of free throws. So Reggio Amelia going to be presented with their runners-up medals. And you go back and, okay, fast forward through what has been a, a really wonderful season uh, to this second leg. And you go back to that second quarter. They've come back from 19 points down. They're just absolutely on a roll. They have all the momentum. Justin Blake goes up for an alley-oop dunk, one-handed. And as he's coming down, his right leg extends. His right foot catches Osmerzak in the, in the face. And then Johnson crashes to the hardwood looks like he might be injured uh, but on review 
It was the judge that he had committed an unsportsmanlike foul because of his foot hitting Uzmerzak in the face. Kaya was upset. He called. He was whistled for a technical. Uzmerzak went down and hit a couple, two of the three free throws that he attempted. And from that time on, as you look at Reggio Emilia's players, uh, somewhat. remorseful over uh, or saddened by the fact that they didn't get the win tonight. Uh, from that point on, it was uh, always going to be uphill as uh, Baches here at college kind of reclaimed the momentum. And then I really felt like as good as Cinciarini is and as important as he is, when, when he picked up a couple of cheap fouls, unnecessary out of the perimeter in that third quarter, and he had four fouls, you know, it just kind of limited his ability to impact the game with, with any type of defense. And Botches here College just came out and really just continued to pour in the points, play more aggressive, and uh, you know, foul trouble became uh, just part and parcel of Reggio Emilia tonight. You know, they lost... Uh, they lost Hopkins to five fouls. They lost Ball to the Rossi to five fouls. And then Stroutons, uh, Johnson, and Cinciarini uh, all had four fouls, and it limited them. So there's the FIBA Europe Cup, and it's going to be lifted tonight by Bacha Zahir College. Who I think, I think clearly over the two legs, they were the better team. Uh, but it was not as straightforward, perhaps, as uh, that final score indicates. Certainly the aggregate. Uh, see Torgai Demorel on the left, the FIBA Europe uh, president. Uh, Kamel Novak, executive director from uh, Europe uh, for FIBA. So they will be presenting uh, the winner's medals. Osmer Zach comes out, Baigu comes out. The Turkai Demirel used to be the president of uh, the Turkish Basketball Federation. He used to be a player himself, did so much uh, for Turkish basketball. Of course, they hosted uh, the FIBA Basketball World Cup back in 2010 when he was uh, president of the Federation. Always uh, gave so much to his country. It's great to see him out there presenting this. And he'll give it to uh, Savash as well, who receives it gratefully. He was, he was the Federation president when Savash came into the national team. Solomon, we saw Black come out already. Jonathan, underrated. I think this guy's uh, maybe not the quickest player on defense, but he has a lot to offer. And all the players coming out. Yomad certainly came out. You see, he's shaking Novak's hand. And Coach Aronak has to put it all together, which he did so well. And again, another uh, player, Ender Arslan, who is now an assistant coach. He was one of the national team point guards uh, for Turkey back in the day, again, uh, when Demirel uh, was the president of the Federation. So just a great night overall for European basketball, a great night for Turkish basketball, a magnificent night for Bacchusahir College as they lift a European trophy for the first time. The FIBA Europe Cup. And I dare say we're going to be seeing a few videos in the social media after this, uh, judging by the number of uh, smartphones you see on the podium. What a great country. Istanbul, what a great city. Uh, you have to say as well, by hosting the second leg. Maybe they had the advantage and they took full advantage of it.
So the MVP has been named Jamar Smith. Deservedly, he came out, really did set the tone in both games. He gets the MVP uh, molten golden basketball. Set the tone really for a, a good competitive night in each leg for Bacchusa here at college. And also he sounded confident after uh, the first game when some of the momentum, some of the shine off a great performance overall was lost with that great Reggio Emilio comeback. He just said, listen, you know, it, it's, a, it's a, a game of runs and uh, we're confident we're gonna go back home and we're gonna get it done. Turgot Demarell is, I'm guessing, going to have uh, the honor of handing the trophy to El Capitano, the captain, O Sabash, from one Turk to another. And Sabash, big smile. We saw him celebrate with his kids, and now he's going to celebrate with his teammates. Every title win every trophy win and especially every european trophy win is important and when you finish your career and you reflect and you look back and you think look at that i was a champion in a european competition that is something uh, that nobody will be able to take away from you and something that you'll always be proud of and you can see exactly that uh, the way these guys are celebrating tonight as the confetti falls from the uh, Ulker Sports and Events Arena and uh, just a great night for Bacchusa here College. Don't hit anybody with that trophy, sir. And now he lifts it up, and it's a uh, promising, all you can say is a very promising future for Bacchus here College, who effectively are kind of the new kids on the block, and they've come right out, and they've won a European title. Well, if we have to do that with every coach and player, we might be here all night, folks, but uh, I guess it would be worth it if we got a chance to do it. So I think we'll end it here. Again, it's been a long, hard season that both of these teams, uh, all the players and the coaches and the staffs, they put their heart and soul into it. And FIBA as well, uh, staging this. All the various clubs uh, that took part this season. And I think it's uh, it's great that we have a champion like Bacha Sahir College uh, because they have demonstrated really uh, from start to finish just that one blemish, that one loss all season uh, that they have been worthy of winning the FIBA Europe Cup. So again, one final time, the second leg tonight won by Bacha Sahir College over Una Hotel's Reggio Emilia, 90 to 74. Uh, they claim a 162-143 victory on aggregate they are the FIBA Euro Cup champions Çeşehir Koleji baş antrenör Erhan Ernak'la birlikteyiz. Artık şampiyon bir baş antrenör. Yarım kalan hikaye tamamlandı ve Avrupa şampiyonusunuz. Ne hissediyorsunuz? Ya çok çok mutluyuz. Gerçekten bazı şeyler dışarıdan göründüğü gibi olmadı. Çok 
ciddi problemlerimiz oldu sezon boyunca. Ama sezon başı bir araya getirdiğimiz ekip, hedefimize olan inancımız hiç değişmedi. Ve bu yükün üstesinden gelebildiler. Doğru eforu, doğru mücadeleyi, doğru karakteri sahaya yansıtabildiler. Görüyorsunuz atmosferi. 13.500 kişi bugün bizim yanımızdaydı. Televizyonlarda bir o kadar daha ben e, taraftarımızın bizi desteklediğini düşünüyorum. Hepsine çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Başkanımıza e, en başından beri koyduğu hedef bizlere olan güveni ve her koşuldaki desteği için Sayın Hüseyin Yücel'e çok özel bir teşekkür var. Bir özel teşekkürüm de benim bugün buralarda olmamda çok büyük emeği olan e, hocaların hocası tabir edebileceğim Yazıcer Ulu Koç'a çok özel bir teşekkür etmek istiyorum hastanızda. Evet koç tabi çıtada bir tık yukarı çıkmış oldu. Artık bunu devamlılık haline getirmek istediğinizi düşünüyorum. E, nedir bundan sonra gelin? Şampiyonlar Ligi ilk hedefimiz bir sonraki aşamada. Oynayabildiğimiz kadar yukarıyı oynadığımız her yerde de iddialı olmayı hedefliyoruz. Umuyorum başarılar. Peki bundan sonrası için de başarılar tebrikler tekrar. Ali Emre tekrar sendeyiz. Evet kaptanla birlikteyiz. Kaptan Avrupa şampiyonluğu ne hissediyorsun? Valla çok mutluyuz. Gerçekten çok büyük gurur duyduk. Çünkü bu kupa için sezon başından beri çok büyük emek verdik. E, buraya kadar desteklemeye gelen bütün herkese çok teşekkür ediyoruz. Gerçekten çok güzel bir atmosferde oynadık final maçını. Zaten bu kupanın da tarihine geçen bir final oldu. Kazandığımız için çok mutluyuz. Çok güzel mücadele ettik. Sadece bugün değil bütün sezon boyunca. Herkes bütün takım arkadaşlarımız, staffı. Yönetimi herkes tek tek tutuyorum. Herkesin çok büyük emeği var bu kupada. Karşın aldığımız için mutluyuz. Evet tabii Bahçeşehir Koleji yeni bir takım aslında. Beş yıllık bir takım olmasına rağmen böylesi bir başarıya imza atıyor. E, koça da sordum. Bundan sonraki hedefi Şampiyonlar Ligi olarak belirledi. Sen neler söyleyeceksin? Ya, tabii ki bundan sonraki hedefler daha ilerisi olacaktır ama önce bugünü kutlamak istiyorum ben. Seneye de Şampiyonlar Ligi olur. Ne olursa o kupada da elimizden geleni yapacağız zaten. Peki, başarılar kaptan. Teşekkürler. Ali Emre sen de istekler. Ee, Sayın Başkan tebrik ediyorum. Teşekkür Yarım kalan hikaye tamamlandı. Ne hissediyorsunuz? Çok çok mutluyuz. Ee, maçtan önce birkaç demeç vardım ama heyecandan e, ne diyeceğimi tam da bilemiyordum. E, çünkü her ne kadar kupa bu sezon başı başlamış gibi gözükse de burada hakikaten 5 yılın bir emeği var. E, i̇çeride bazı arkadaşlar ağlıyor, sevinçten ağlıyor. Hakikaten çok mutluyuz. E, önümüzdeki hafta bayram, çifte bayram yaşattık ülkemize. E, bir Avrupa kupasını ülkemize getirmemiz çok büyük bir gurur. Hem kurumumuz için hem ülkemiz için çok mutluyuz. Ne diyebilirim ki? Maç içinde ben heyecanınıza da tanıklık ettim aslında. Ee, arada bir kalkıp gidiyorsunuz, tekrar geliyorsunuz. Neler hissettiniz o maçın atmosferi? Ya sezon maçından beri bizim takımın bir rutini var. Şöyle bir 19-20 sayı açılırız. Sonra baş başa geliriz. Herhalde ara sıra takılıyorum oyunculara. Bilerek mi yapıyorsunuz heyecanını korumak için? Ee, ama buradaki galibiyetin yüzde elli, yüzde altmış sebebi burayı dolduran, full dolduran 
seyircilerimiz, taraftarlarımız, öğrencilerimiz, velilerimiz hepsi, hepsine Allah razı olsun. Çok çok teşekkür ediyorum. Başka ne diyebilirim? Çok mutluyuz. Teşekkürler Sayın Başkan. Nicelerine diyelim. Tekrar tebrikler. Al Emre sendeyiz. İki sayı basket. Thank you. 